and Dwayne, but I like it. It's provocative. It gets me going. All right. So <laughs> it is time for the shoe report, everyone presented by Mike's Hard Lemonade. Remember, hard days deserve a hard lemonade. So again, shoe report, basically trying to look for all those tilting near miss moments, the beyond the box score stuff that simply leaves fantasy managers saying, you guessed it, sheesh. So Dwayne, going to go through again some of these near miss moments from last week, put a bow on everything week one, and then get into some waiver wire pickups and utilization goodness ahead of week two. And starting things off, we have unrealized air yards. And for those unfamiliar with the concept, we are literally just measuring the total distance the football traveled in the air on incomplete targets. So if I'm 50 yards downfield, Dwayne throws me a perfect pass and I drop it. Guess what? That's 50 unrealized air yards. Goes to show you that, yeah, maybe these guys had a bit more fantasy friendly opportunity than we might have seen from just looking at their final production in the box score and man oh man Dwayne two guys standing out among the rest Calvin Ridley at the top with 134 unrealized air yards and when including penalties which is a new twist I've added this year because there are roughly four times as many defensive pass interference penalties than offense we have AD Mitchell in second place at 132 so I get it Calvin Ridley on most people's you know rosters already he's not going to have you know a high percentage of free agency rates in any of these leagues but ad mitchell Dwayne, someone that maybe people should be taking a gander at on the old waiver wire yeah mitchell's available in most leagues when i say most like over 70 percent of the time over on yahoo right now um he came out and he really dominated ian from a target share standpoint 28 percent. that was second on the team behind michael pittman so i think a lot of people are going to see the alec pierce box score and yeah he did have the two deep bombs that is unlocked in his game by what we see with anthony richardson and his ability but it was mitchell that was still the clear leader in target share and targets per route run alec pierce was really the same guy we've always seen from a targets per route run basis 15 percent this weekend so he didn't really change it just happened that he caught his two deep bombs he's probably going to completely disappear in the future but mitchell is a guy that have staying power they're moving him all over the formation they're getting him into the slot we'll see what happens once josh downs gets back ian but yes when i look at mitchell i've got him in, in my top five ads for waiver wires this week which we have the waiver wire tool over at fancy life which you guys can go check out we give you recommended fab amounts we give you the order for the priority all that sort of stuff you can filter it by the position that you need for your team we have got you covered Mitchell again did have one situation where it was you know pretty much a pure blown coverage by Derek Stingley but I happen to get pretty wide open on the other two seriously guys conservatively with accurate passes we're talking about an extra 140 yards and not one but two touchdowns on his total quite a bit different than you know the one catch for two scoreless yards I end up actually having in realized production so other guys that did have at least 85 unrealized air yards last week Amari Cooper Cortland Sutton Cooper Cup Rashid Shaheed Jerry Judy Tyree Kill Xavier really get and yes Rashad Bateman who always seems to be topping these sort of metrics yet we just can't get you know actual production out of the guy maybe one day though Dwayne we can dream we can dream all right let's talk <laughs> about something a bit more concrete we all know it when we see it that's right dropped touchdowns and there were quite a few of them last week that I do believe objectively or drops and can be blamed on the wide receiver specifically we had Keenan Allen from six yards out let a pass bounce off his hands unclear if there were butterfingers involved Amari Cooper on Deshaun Watson's best throw of the day had a 36 yard touchdown go off both of his hands Jalen McMillan Dwayne really could have had a much bigger day because he dropped a 38 yard touchdown had a potential 61 yard catch and run that was overthrown and then also drew a DPI on the four yard line so he ended up getting again that later game touchdown but you know realistically could have had a couple more on his total also on Monday night Brandon Ayuk had a 13 yard score go off his hands in the end zone causing Peyton Manning to freak out and say he would have caught that if he was in camp always love watching the man cast and then finally Taysom Hill Mike Jasicki and Josh Palmer also had you know short red zone area drops so for me Dwayne it is Keenan Allen who's the guy that sticks out where again I think his overall what he did out there doesn't necessarily match what we saw in the box score had a touchdown drop yes which is on him but there was another play where I'm not sure if he would have scored down the sideline would have had to make one guy miss but we're talking at least a 30 yard catch and honestly could have been a 40 yard touchdown so I know Keenan was someone that really stuck out to you as you were going through this past week's utilization yeah and honestly keenan would be even higher on the utilization report which is live over on fantasylife.com right now but we had the injury at the end of the game now he did come back into the game he missed a series but we don't know he came into the game with the heel injury we've gotten no confirmation essentially the coaching staff is kind of downplaying it right now but we know that's not always 
the truth, as we just saw this last week with CMC. So we'll have to really watch the practice reports this week. But with Odunze dealing with the MCL, like that's another potential boost for Allen. But, you know, he didn't even need that. Last week, man, this guy had a 33% target share, Ian, and 50% of the team's air yards. So to your point, he wasn't just doing this underneath. And, and yes, he was operating from the slot a lot, but he was also getting down the field. And you mentioned the big miss on the chunk play. You miss, mentioned the drop catch uh, that should have been a touchdown. And Bears fans were rightfully upset. I get it. They, they feel like Keenan might have, you know, he could have ended up costing them the game. It did didn't end up going that way for them. But look, guys, when you get targeted that often, you're getting open that often, you're going to just have some drops. Like, it's going to happen. I saw a lot of people freaking out and talking about how bad Keenan Allen is. No, the real takeaway, you're missing the plot here. The guy still looks great. When you can go out there and earn targets at that rate, that means you probably still are a pretty, pretty good football player. And I would say, if we have Odunze out, Ian, for any stretch of time here, you're looking at DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, man, really having this offense consolidated around them. Now, we need to step forward from Caleb. Not the best week one performance from Caleb. Looked like a superhero in the preseason, which we often see, and it's why we say, hey, we can't overrate what passers are doing in the preseason. (laughs) But he looked really special, and I think we fell into that a little bit. Look the total opposite in week one. So my guess is, though, the truth is somewhere in between those two things. So, yes, I expect Keenan Allen to look more like a wide receiver one. I think he's a borderline wide receiver one if Odunze is out of the lineup. Texans in week two for the Bears, who, again, still look good on paper, but that's another team that didn't necessarily put their best foot forward during that matchup against the Colts. Certainly gave up more than a few big plays and could have given up even more, as we just discussed about A.D. Mitchell. Last Chiefs category, there are plenty more that you guys can find for free over on FantasyLife.com. But, Dwayne, the DeAndre Swift special, the Eagles RB special, if you will, players that got down at the one-yard line and then did not score a touchdown on the same drive. Quite a few instances, as always, but only one person had two on the week that's right it was Washington Commanders running back Brian Robinson also had Kyron Williams Jonathan Taylor Saquon Barkley Rashad White Luke McCaffrey Brock Wright and Noah Gray again get all the way to the doorstep of the goal line but just couldn't quite punch it across and then had to watch as someone else got to celebrate the touchdown a few short plays later so I think Robinson here is the interesting one Dwayne because again it is a situation where Jaden Daniels I think if we had to compare him versus guys like Kyler and Lamar or Hertz and Allen we might have said more Kyler and Lamar in terms of like, yeah, there's a very high ceiling with the rushing yards, but we didn't necessarily expect him to be this constant threat inside the five yard line. You know, no, no tush pushes involved and just a more slim quarterback out there. But man, based on what we've seen from the preseason and then in the week one, if they're calling a read option on the one yard line, Jaden Daniels is keeping that thing and doing everything in his power to get into the end zone. So overall thoughts on Brian Robinson's week one, because he looked good out there. But if Jaden Daniels is taking all the touches from the one and Austin Eckler is also looking good as a receiver not the most fantasy friendly in the uh, role in the world for b-rob yeah i mean i think still though it probably balances out to your point i don't think Jaden daniel still long term is going to end up for the season looking like jalen hurts or like josh allen maybe I mean, he's going to take some pretty <laughs> big hits along the way which the guy's already prone to doing so i, I think that robinson pro, robinson is probably still going to get his to your point you do have to worry a little bit about austin eckler here so i think robinson's fine like he's still that low end running back two, high end running back three you know if you drafted him to play him as your running back two and you're really strong at wide receiver you're going to feel fine about him you're going to start him every week but he does need an injury to austin eckler to truly like uncap like some big upside um the the nice thing though is he does look also pretty good as far as like efficiency just because now you have to deal with Jaden Daniels and Robinson and teams are going to they're going to cue in on that in and they're going to decide they want to take away the big runs from Jaden Daniels he had 88 yards rushing this past weekend Jaden Daniels did now a lot of those were on scrambles he wasn't as effective on the design rush stuff but still when teams have to worry about that you know what that's done in the past for guys like Gus Edwards and how much it can open up the middle of the field so yeah I say Brian Robinson Jr. still a low end running back two, high end running back three did find the end zone another time, had 89 yards on 15 touches. So, yeah, we're not saying you can't start the man by any stretch of the imagination. But, yeah, that close, guys, just an extra six feet away from having two additional scores on the box score. I think I speak for all of us when I do say sheesh. So, yeah, Washington versus the Giants next week, Dwayne. Talk about a movable object meeting a stoppable force out there. Hopefully, will <laughs> at least be a fun time for our fantasy players involved. So, again, check out the sheesh report. Check out Mike's Hard Lemonade. Again, hard days deserve a hard lemonade. But now, guys, that's it. We're putting a bow on week one. We are officially